English is not my native language, so I'm sorry. But we bought a house a couple of years ago. And within one minute, this house was built by crime prevention standards of the police and stamped certificate on everything, locks, doors, windows, everything. Yet, somebody was able to get in in one minute without making any noise while we were home. And I'll get back to you why this is happening, why it happened, and why it's important to us. But we're here for cyber security, not for home security. And we hear a lot of the problems that we have now, malware attacks, denial of service attacks, threats, leakage of passwords, information. How is this happening? How come we are here today with a lot of people? Well, I think part of the problem lies in the complexity of the technology we are using at the moment. And um, I can explain this this way. When I entered the IT sector and made a career of my hobby back in the 80s, all my friends were studying nice things like physics and chemistry. But the nice thing was, at birthday parties, they could always ask me, and I always knew everything, like shift F7, 7, 1, maybe you know what I mean. That's the answer to the question. But nowadays, all my friends also move to the IT sector. We all share the passion for IT security, but at birthday parties, it's really, really difficult to understand each other. And this is how complex it is at the moment. But there's another problem that we have, and it's legacy. It's easy to see why in a car of 50 years ago, it is extremely difficult to fit in ABS or ad, you know, adaptive cruise control or airbags or something else. Because you have to design this in from the beginning. You can't do it after. Yet in our IT systems, in our networks, in our computers, is technology that was developed 40, 50 years ago. And adding security layers to things like networks or authentication is extremely difficult. Actually, sh we should start all over, but that's impossible. So now we are faced with solving problems we should actually have prevented in the first place. But of course, back then, this was not possible. And finally, IT staff is extremely good at solving problems. We use them for a lot of solving problems. But actually, they should be working on preventing problems. But that's hard, because the industry is moving forward so fast that it's difficult to catch up. So we are also always running behind the facts. And I think this shows why we are facing these problems. So what can you do about this? Of course, I only have a few minutes, so I will go into four topics. I told you about my house, and somebody got in in one minute without making any noise while we were home. So what actually happened is this. And this is not my house, by the way. But one of the big window panes in the house broke just like that because of the stress in the house. And we called the insurance company, and they sent somebody over in a van, and he parked the van in front of the house. Me and my wife were home, so we made some coffee, and we thought, where's this guy? What's he doing? And we were looking and went to the front of the house to have a really good look at the van, but we couldn't see him anymore, so we thought, what's he, what's he up to? And when we turned around, he was standing behind us, and he said, hello. And we were totally shocked. How did he get in so fast? What happened? And he explained to us that the window was fitted on backwards. So the fittings were on the outside, and the window came out on the outside. So the only thing he had to do was remove the fittings, take the window out, and step through the frame. That's it. But our house had a police certification. So what happened? This is an implementation problem. And the same happens in IT as well. It's not in the products that you buy. It's not in the crypto that you use. Most of the times, it's in the implementation. And this incident really taught me that. But sometimes also we miss quite obvious things. So to give you an example, my youngest son was drawing a ship not too long ago. And he drew the hull. And then suddenly he started frantically drawing some vertical lines. And I thought, he's destroying the, the drawing now. So I asked him, what are you doing? But he said, Dad, I am drawing compartments. Because if the ship does not have compartments and it hits an iceberg, it will go down like the Titanic. Duh, he said. And I said, yeah, that makes sense to a young boy to, to have this. But how come then that one of the largest shipping conglomerates in the world was hijacked by malware or ransomware. And these guys know how to build the ships, right? I'm sure 
they have compartmented their ships. But they didn't really compartment the network. And this is a very simple thing to do with a technology called network access control. And maybe you've heard of it, network access control, NAC. It sounds like you have access control. But actually, it's way more about compartmenting your network and making smaller pieces. So when a bad event hits, the problems you get are less severe. And this makes a big difference. It's an easy step to take. So network access control is reviving a little bit because it has a bad name from the past. Certainly something you need to think about. Then there's a lot of things users can do wrong, right? It's easy for them to make mistakes. But did you know there exists technology that really help the user not to make mistakes? You can do this by adding, for example, a token or a smart card or something else, a certificate to authentication. That's nice. And maybe you have done this already. But the concept that a trusted user, a user that has authenticated himself, actually gets broad access to the network without any restrictions, we should actually not do that anymore. That's creating a lot of problem. A better way to do it, actually, is the least privilege, is the way to start off with denying anything and just connecting the things that the user really needs at the moment he needs it. And this technology exists. It's called Zero Trust IT. It starts off with nothing, and unless you explicitly allow things, the user is allowed to access. This really benefits the users, because if they do something wrong, at least it's compartmented again. You can also call this software-defined perimeter. And finally, in IT, I always see the notion that we have to control everything. We have to control all the devices, all the operating systems, all the applications, every instance of every version of Android and iOS, everything. But that's extremely, extremely hard to do. There are so many things outside there. And you have to, to think about everything. It's almost the impossible. But there's also technology that helps you there if you want. It's called containerization or containers. It is possible to bring information to an insecure endpoint without compromising the security. You can do this for email. You can do it for groupware. But it's also possible to do this for a lot of other applications. And most people I speak to don't know this. So containerization is a way to get out of having to manage everything so you can focus more on what's important to your business. OK, four things we can do now. And maybe it helps a little bit. But what about the future, then? Well, three things I would like to mention out of many. First of all, if you didn't already do this, get a grip on identity. And by that, I mean identities is what you store on your users, the information. In the old days, this used to be inside our systems in the company. But nowadays, with all the cloud services we use, identities are everywhere. And this is not only difficult to manage, it's also extremely dangerous. Before you know it, somebody has access, and you don't know. So to organize this better, there are technologies available called identity federation and identity provisioning, which you absolutely should look into. But please be aware, you can get these kinds of things for free when you have some cloud services. But I think it's extremely important that you put your requirements for this on paper first and then decide to look for a solution. You can have identities in the cloud, but you can also have them on premises and make sure that only cloud can access be through your own identity provider. And by the way, speaking about the future, I think that we will see the bring your own identity in the near future, because that's what will happen. But that's another story. Then I already heard it. We have to get rid of the passwords. Passwords are difficult. But how? Well. An easy thing to do, of course, is to add a thing you know, to add a thing you need to have. Two-factor authentication, just heard it already, 2FA. However, those two factors are still difficult. The passwords are still in. It's also possible to move to biometrics. But there's a catch. Biometrics are 
dangerous because we already saw court rulings against companies that wanted to use biometrics of their employees and they were not allowed to in some countries. So before you do this, make sure you have a solution where the biometrics are stored in a user's personal device because this information is considered to be private. And this is possible. And finally, the last one, and this is way out, I know, but just to explain a little bit about it. We just discussed the fact that the burglar came in through the window, not by breaking my locks that had a certification. Similarly, we use crypto to protect information that we store. And it's very unlikely that somebody tries to break the crypto because we assume, we don't know this by the way, but we assume it's extremely hard to break it. However, universities, big companies are working on new concepts of computing called quantum computing. And while this is not ready yet, and it will probably take a decade or so, this will happen. And we already know today that everything we encrypt will be vulnerable because of these machines. That will happen within a decade. So depending on your business, depending on the security, depending on what you're doing, I think it is now getting time you start to try to understand this and what it will mean. No hurry, but it will come. So this ends my presentation for today. Again, my name is Hans Peter. I work for a company called Soliton Systems. We are based in Tokyo. And of course, you may have guessed that we have solutions for the problems I just showed you. So if there's anything you want to know or anything you would like to discuss, I'll be here at the Q&A later, but I'm also at the stand downstairs. Thank you.